Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are here to talk about a most intriguing statement made by a certain fortune teller in chapter 990, which is pretty, you know, balls deep into Act 3 of Wano. So if you're an anime only watcher concerned about spoilers, I just want you to know that it's not really my mission to dive deeply into the core details of Act 3, but it is going to be unavoidable in this particular discussion. So there's your warning, I have many other videos safe for you to watch, but for everyone else, we are of course talking about a particularly impactful prediction made by the ever curious Basil Hawkins. In chapter 990, with the raid on Onigashima now in full force, Hawkins has stated that the chances of a quote unquote certain man surviving until tomorrow are 1%. Not a great number for the certain man in question, not a great number at all, but this does leave us with the ever burning question of who this certain man is, of which there are a great number of options. But firstly, I would like to point out that however low this may sound, 1% is quite significant, especially compared to when Kaido attacked Kid's base and Hawkins predicted that he had a 0% chance of escape. Compared to that, 1% is quite surprisingly hopeful. It's the same sort of hope I have that you, dear viewer, will subscribe to the Grand Line Review, resulting in regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And at this point, the Grand Fleet has surpassed a quarter of a million subscribers, which is amazing. So please do make sure to sign up through the red buttony thing and let's go and take this world by storm. But now on to some more serious business. We are here to figure out who this certain man is. And I did dive into it quite briefly during during my chapter review, but due to the speedy nature of those things, there was one amazing candidate who I completely overlooked, and that would be Diaz Drake. I think it would make all of the sense in the world for Drake to be the owner of this 1% survival rate. And quite frankly, this thought process all has to do with Drake's very next line, which was 1%. Sucks to be him. And it's quite on the nose, but I think that would be one of these funny little narrative hints that Drake was accidentally referring to himself. An idea which I think is enforced further at the tail end of the chapter when Drake gets ambushed by Queen, Who's Who, and Hawkins. Because I really do quite like the idea that Hawkins, having concocted this plot with the other two, is taking one last opportunity to see how this whole situation with Drake is likely going to play out. That is very in keeping with how Hawkins operates, making readings right down to the very moment of conflict, just to make sure that he goes into a situation with as much information as possible. Especially because he would have been the instigator of all of this actually, as neither Queen nor Who's Who would have had any idea without his information. And also the 1% fortune ties in very nicely with with the end of chapter 990 as well. Because of Drake's hole in a monologue about hope and there still being hope and hope and stuff, culminating in his offer to fight alongside Luffy as an army of one. And you know, I really don't think that there is a stronger indicator of raw hope than a mere 1% chance of survival. Sort of like the idea that hope can only be found within the deepest pit of despair, all poetic and such. The idea being that there is really no need for hope if the odds seem much more beneficial to you at the time. So I'm actually kind of annoyed that I missed that in the chapter review Although to be fair, when I write those things, it is usually like six in the morning here in Australia. So sometimes the more subtle nuance of chapters can be a bit lost in translation to me there. But as much as I do currently love the idea that we are referring to Drake, that is far from the only viable option here. So let's move on to someone who many would consider to be the obvious choice, and that is of course, Mr. Luffy. So while it makes a lot less sense to me anyway, in the context of chapter 990 alone for Hawkins to be measuring Luffy, it is still entirely in keeping with his character. You know, we have this unprecedented raid occurring and a very precariously placed Hawkins, well, he might be weighing up his, you know, betrayal options. And should Luffy have a fantastic chance of survival on this battlefield, then that might become the right party to align with. And I do maintain that a 1% survival chance for Luffy would be pretty fitting with the current events. As much as things might be going oddly well right now, Luffy is still in the most dire of situations going up directly against two emperors of the sea. So by all means, his survival rate should be low and just as with Drake, Luffy can work with that 1%. So long as it isn't 0%, we're all good here. Once again, finding hope within the depths of the opposite of hope. I don't know why I didn't just say despair again, but I'm not re-recording it. Now, something I did not mention in the chapter review would be a pretty huge conflicting bit of information actually, which comes to us courtesy of all the way back to act one of Wano. When Luffy and Zoro first encountered Hawkins, he did a reading, which came to the conclusion that Luffy's chance of survival one month from then was a whopping 19%, a fair bit higher than 1%, maths would tell us, which isn't to say that probabilities can't change or that they might be significantly less accurate the further out you're trying to read them. But it always struck me as a bit odd that Hawkins chose one month specifically 
perfectly. I mean, narratively, we obviously know why, because it lines up perfectly with the raid on Onigashima. It was just a strange and almost arbitrary move for Hawkins to make as a character, but it was a great move for the actual story, which One Piece is. And in any case, this event is what gives me the most pause for thought when attributing this 1% survival chance to Luffy, just because it is a direct contradiction of another reading that lines up with the same sort of time destination. Things could have changed, we obviously don't really know how Hawkins' powers work, but for now, that's that. So moving on to another widely speculated character who I also touched on, we have Kaido. And I would love for the reading to be referring to Kaido, but my brain refuses to allow me to go down that path. It just feels like reading Kaido's chances of survival as 1% would be a far more impactful moment than we see here. And my main argument in the review was that Hawkins would probably seem just a little bit more shocked. Upon further reflection though, there's nothing to say that this is the first time he's seen this reading, and maybe he's been keeping an eye on Kaido for a while now. In fact, I'm almost certain he has. It's just tricky with Hawkins though, because it's hard to know how resigned he is to being a part of the Beast Pirates. Unlike the other worst generation members, he doesn't act out of his own core drive. Rather, he lets the cards tell him what would be the best cause of action, which is fun and unique and one of the many reasons why I love Hawkins. And if anything, and rather fittingly, it does make him more predictable than the other members. But given that he has chosen to give up Drake here rather than increase the chaos with his own betrayal, I think we can quite safely say that the 1% man is not Kaido. So next up, let's move to a potentially a much more tragic figure being Trafalgar Law. I think he might also be a good option because he's very much been the main pain in the ass for Hawkins all throughout Wano thus far, so it makes sense for Hawkins to be keeping tabs on him. In addition though, Law does slot in quite nicely as well due to the whole Will of D thing, because as much as I played up the 1% as being a great indicator of hope, that only works in certain cases, like the impossible existence that is Luffy and the appropriate theming that is Drake. However, it is still 1%, and that is generally very bad, and that could add another death flag to Mr. Law, who rather unfortunately already has two of those. The first of which is that being the user of the Ope Ope no Mi, he is seemingly destined to give up his own life to perform the perennial youth surgery. But in addition to that, he is also a D, a D outside of the Monkey Clan, which generally does not bode too well for those characters as they have a habit of dying rather tragically and before their time, albeit with a nice smile on their faces. So as much as I don't know if I'm personally sold on the idea of a law sacrifice, especially on Wano, I could see it happening. He's just such an unfortunate man in that regard. Sticking with the worst generation though, I think that Kid could also be submitted as a potential candidate here. We haven't really gone too deeply into his character, but his presence in this conflict is absolutely massive and he has a prior relationship with Hawkins. In fact, at one stage, the two did have a genuine allegiance towards each other, which was ruined by one scratch man up -oo. So Hawkins could still very much be looking to reignite that alliance and stay true to their original intentions. It's just that with a 1% survival chance, maybe Kid isn't quite the best guy to be turning to right now. That's something we would definitely need a lot more context for though. It's very hard to imagine Kid becoming incredibly relevant in this arc just to very potentially die, especially due to being such a primary component of the worst generation. And in fact, the only other member that has been touted as more noteworthy than Luffy in any way. Blackbeard accepted, of course. But we still have very little to go by with Kid. He's still kind of an enigma of this whole arc. So any more talk in this regard would be pure speculation. And that's right, even purer than this whole video of speculation thus far. So I'm going to move on to a more fun idea, which is that Hawkins might be reading himself. What a twist. Although I do have to admit this is something I more enjoy as an idea rather than anything I can support with actual evidence. I just really love the thought of Hawkins being forced into the Beats Pirates and perpetually trying to read his way out of it. And for example, should he now see his own chances of survival by tomorrow being 1%, then that could send him into quite the panic, causing him to take drastic action like he did in chapter 990, revealing Drake's betrayal. And if anything, Hawkins could see a potential Luffy victory as a death sentence for him and now might be in the motions of trying to do everything possible to make sure that Kaido and the Beast Pirates come out on top. To me, that would be a pretty fascinating use of Hawkins, a man so governed by fortune telling, doing everything in his power in an attempt to change his own fortune. However, this is One Piece and I don't quite know how likely that is. Although if I was to rank all of these candidates thus far, I would put Hawkins possibly above that of both Kaido and Kid because at least it makes sense with the character and his overall motifs. And to be perfectly honest, this list of potential characters may as well be endless. We could attribute it to anyone, and for example, Yamato maybe. This is something I thought about in the chapter review, but I didn't really bring it up. However, there could be something quite tragically sound about Yamato facing a similar end to Odin, AKA a bit of the old death. Perhaps, you know, helping to deal the final blow 
Hermit, Kaido freeing Wano to open its borders and fulfilling Odin's final will, but tragically passing away as a result. Sounds kind of cool, but I don't know why Hawkins would, well, care enough to be reading Yamato as opposed to everyone else on Onigashima. It's a real stretch, as are most other candidates that I've seen proposed elsewhere. I mean, I've seen a fair few people raise the possibility of Momonosuke or other members of the Tobi Ropo, or even key members of the Beast Pirates. And in each and every case, I just can't quite latch onto the idea. I mean, yes, it could be a completely random left field character like I've even seen Hyogoro proposed, but I just don't think it would hold the same sort of dramatic oomph. And we all know that Oda is all about that oomph. Plus, I mean, Hawkins taking the time to read someone like Hyogoro as opposed to the plethora of other magnetic individuals around currently engaged in the storm of fate just seems like quite a waste of time. Wherever he happens to be looking, Hawkins is keeping his eye on the prize and the prize is never going to be Hyogoro. But eventually these readings are going to clear his path forward. So perhaps this certain man's 1% survival chance was not quite enough to push Hawkins as needed, but he is in such a unique position in the series right now. Hawkins knows a lot more about what's going on on Wano right now than anyone else in the story, or even us readers, YouTubers, theorists, whatever. He's just sitting there silently looking into his equivalent of the Matrix and maneuvering accordingly. And so Hawkins is someone to always keep your eye on. He's kind of like a compass telling you which way things are likely to go. And right now that compass is pointing very, very south, with him still firmly aligned with Kaido. So with that in mind, I think we have some tough times ahead on Wano, although probably not tougher than the certain man and his 1% chance of survival. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.